and welcome back to another episode of that show that you love so dearly here on my channel, Out of the Vault. Of course, if you are new here, let me just say welcome. It is a pleasure to have you. And for all of you returning, I know that you have all been so excited for the newest episode of this show where we go into the wonders that is Disney magic, whether it is animated classics, Studio Ghibli films, technically part of Disney to a certain extent, as well as Disney Pixar. But today, of course, while it is the final episode of 2021, it is definitely a very exciting episode because we are marking a Disney milestone as we discuss the 60th, yes, the 60th Disney canon classic from this year, 2021, Encanto, starring the voice talents of Stephanie Beatrice, John Leguizamo, and of course, the amazing toe-tapping soundtrack of the great wonderkin that he is, Lin-Manuel Miranda. So of course, when it comes to anything Disney, I am always excited, regardless if the movie ends up being good, bad, or indifferent. Different. But from the trailers that I saw and just the production that was behind it, I just had a feeling that I was going to have a great time with this movie. And I am so grateful that I had the opportunity to finally see a Disney movie on the big screen for the first time in a long time. The last time that I did, it was Disney Pixar's Onward in 2020. So it has been so amazing knowing that I've been able to go back to the movie theaters, but of course knowing that I was finally going to get a glimpse of Disney magic in a wonderful way, this was just something that I had very high hopes for. So this is the story of a young girl named Mirabelle, and this is her and her family in Colombia. They are a very special family in this little village because they have a truly unique gift. A long time ago, Mirabelle's abuela in a time of need, received magic in the form of a candle. And after that time of darkness, the candle gave her this glorious mansion called the Casita. And then she was able to raise her triplets as well as their children and Throughout time, each of these children and grandchildren would develop their own unique gifts for the purposes of not necessarily seeing what people with these superpowers normally do. This is just a family that has these gifts and they use these gifts to help the community. Until the day that it was Mirabelle's turn to find out what her gift was going to be, and it turned out that she did not receive one. However, she never wanted to look at it as something that was a bad thing. Rather, she still believed that she has the ability to do good things with her family as well as for her community. But then through a couple of interesting moments, she notices some visions where the magic of Casita is failing and she doesn't know why. And she goes on a quest to try and save the Casita. And through that quest, she learns a lot about herself as well as the importance of family. So, Encanto was an absolute delight. That is one of the few things that can sum it up in a nutshell. This movie has so much for you to enjoy. I absolutely love the characters. Mirabelle, I absolutely loved that she could be serious and she could be funny. One of the biggest surprises was the fact that there was a lot of physical comedy in this movie and it really played to the advantage. The timing was absolutely perfect when it came to the physical and the verbal comedy. Just the way that she plays off of her family was just absolutely wonderful. Everything in regards to the animation and the color palette, it is bright, it is vibrant. Even during the dark moments in this movie, it is still light and vibrant, and you absolutely are just engrossed by the beauty of the animation that you see before you. The acting is wonderful, too. Now, Stephanie Beatrice is an actress who I absolutely love. She played a character named Rosa Diaz in, in probably one of the greatest comedy shows of the last 10 years, and that, of course, was Brooklyn Nine-Nine. That show literally just ended this year, and my god, it was a wonderful show indeed. But because of what Stephanie Beatrice does on that show, when I found out that she was going to be voicing Mirabelle, I did not know what to expect when I found out that that movie was going to be a musical. But if it wasn't for a little movie called In the Heights, of course, also Lin-Manuel Miranda's original creation from Broadway finally coming to the big screen this year... 
I never would have actually known that Stephanie Beatrice has a great singing voice because she's in In the Heights as well. So it all just clicked once I found that out. And she is wonderful. And let's get to some of those songs. They are just toe-tapping. You snap your fingers. You smile. They are upbeat. They're just a joy to listen to. I'm pretty sure there are so many people out there that went to get the soundtrack just because Lin-Manuel Miranda just knows how to make music and knows how to do it well. John Leguizamo is another character. I'm not going to talk much about him because he is a crucial piece to the story and I just don't want to give anything away. But this was the very first time that he lent his voice to a Disney movie and it was also the first time that he actually finally broke away from playing Sid the Sloth in the Ice Age movies, even though those are now Disney properties, people were very excited to see him do something else in regards to his voice acting. But I guess the big question that you're wondering is, is this one of the best Disney canon classics? Well, I am actually going to say it's not, but it's still a fantastic movie. But what is it about this movie that just doesn't give it that extra oomph that it needs to become that great movie? I mean, look, the best way to do so is to compare it to the last classic, which was Raya and the Last Dragon, which I think was one of the best films that came out this year. They both have grand worlds, but one of the few things that Encanto lacked that Raya and the Last Dragon truly expanded upon was the world building and the character development. Maybe it's just because of the fact that this was not a film that was supposed to be an animated drama with a lot of action, Maybe this was just supposed to be a more toned down, more inward, more closely knit story because it does really focus on the Madrigal family. The music was probably the biggest surprise to me because when it comes to Lin-Manuel Miranda and his music, when you go and see one of his movies or even a show of his, you're going to walk out of there remembering at least three songs. Now, I loved Moana, I loved In the Heights, but I could not remember for the life of me some of these songs that I listened to while I was watching this movie, and it took the effort to actually go and look at the soundtrack on YouTube and Amazon just so I could remind myself, did I like these songs? Were these songs great? I don't remember. But the songs are good. They're just not as memorable as some of the songs that you got from, let's say, Moana. And probably one of the few things, now this is just a personal nitpick. I'm not saying that it's something that you would say destroyed the movie for you, but again, this movie is still great. I just feel that we didn't get as much as we could have gotten. There are two specific songs in this movie that are sung by Mirabelle's sisters, Luisa and Isabella, and I just felt that through those songs, we learned a little bit about them and how they were truly feeling, but I feel that if this movie was not a musical, we could have gotten more from them, and that's one of the other things that I feel is a weakness for this film. Mirabelle is definitely expanded upon, but there are so many characters in this movie that we only get a glimpse of and we wish we would get more of. Probably the highlight of the advertisements is her little cousin Antonio who has the ability to talk to animals and you see that in the commercials. You want to see this little boy because you expect him to be such a driving force of this movie. And he's not. He has some wonderful heartfelt moments and some really cute moments, but you wonder why the advertisements were focusing on this character and yet we barely got him in the movie. And the rest of the family, there definitely were moments where they shined, but you just wish that you had more of those moments. Maybe there will be some animated shorts. Maybe there will even be a sequel. I don't know how it's doing in the box office at this point in time, but I'm pretty sure that when it goes to Disney+, Plus, it will definitely get a lot of viewership, but I just feel that that was, for me personally, the weakest part of this movie. I just feel that we didn't get enough from this movie, and I truthfully feel we could have gotten more. Like I said, maybe it's just because of the fact that they wanted to keep it short, they wanted to keep it close-knit, they wanted to keep it simple, but I just feel that when you compare it to a movie like Raya and the Last Dragon, and even the Disney Pixar movies that came out since November, like Soul and Luca, Luca is a simple story, but you get so much character development from a lot of the characters in that film, and for a simple story to be that grand is what makes Luca such a great film to many. But still, at the end of the day, 
It is wonderful to see a film like Encanto getting the proud number of 60 in the Disney library because throughout that movie, all I could think about was the fact that Snow White and the Seven Dwarves came out in 1937 and just to see how we got from point A to point B and the road that Disney actually traveled on to get to this point, it is just incredible to think about how many times it innovated, how many times it could have fallen flat on its face, how many times it redeemed itself, and just all the amazing characters and stories and memories that we take away from all 60 of these Disney canon classics, it just makes me all the more excited for what's on the road ahead. Because as of now, I am just very excited for what Pixar is offering. We just found out what Disney is going to be offering in regards to the canon classics in 2022. And I just want to know more about this new movie because it looks like it's going to be another original story. And that's another one of the things that I will definitely say about Disney when it comes to their canon classics. The last five years, there's been a lot more original stories rather than some adapted stories, and I really appreciate the creativity that Disney has gone through to bring some of these truly memorable modern classics to the big screen and also into our homes due to the last two years. But Encanto is a great watch. It is definitely a movie that I'm going to own on Blu-ray or DVD, but it's not one of those movies that I'm going to reach for on my shelf when it comes to the rewatchability as fast as I would a movie like Zootopia or The Great Mouse Detective or Pinocchio or other canon classics that you know that I am such a big fan of. But still, there is tons of rewatchability here, and a movie like this, do I think it's going to win Best Animated Feature at the Oscars? I really hope that it doesn't, because I still believe that Raya and the Last Dragon was the better canon classic of 2021, but there is a movie outside of Disney that is unlike anything that I ever saw that really should take the Best Animated Film Oscar in 2022, and that is The Mitchells vs. The Machines. If you haven't seen that movie, you should. But Encanto is, like I said, a fun, enjoyable film filled with Disney magic. And that's why I'm going to give Encanto three stars out of four. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Please leave your comments in the box below. I would love to talk to you about Encanto. And I'm looking forward to another strong year in 2022. But until then, I will see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, feel free to leave a comment. Also, feel free to subscribe if you want to be up to date with our latest videos. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you in the next one. Actions speak louder than words.